Hi, welcome back to Sopnega. Let us dream together. In today's video, we are going to learn about materials. Let's get started. So, what is a material? A material is a substance or a mixture of substances that constitutes an object. Materials can be pure or impure, living or non-living matter. Materials can be classified based on their physical and chemical properties or on their geological origin or biological function. Materials can be human-made or natural. An example of a material that is natural is sheep's wool. We use it to make jerseys because the wool can keep us warm. An example of a material that is human-made is plastic, alloys of metals and etc. Let's start with the properties of materials. Each material has different properties. It is these properties of the materials that make it suitable for its particular uses. So we will learn one by one. Materials can be strong in different ways. For example, concrete is very strong. It does not easily change shape and you can't push it together or you can't crush it. We say that concrete has compressive strength. Compressive strength resists being pushed together. Other materials that have high compressive strength include bricks and rocks. Steel doesn't have compressive strength, but it is strong in another way. It can resist being stretched, which means that steel can withstand tension. We say that steel has tensile strength. Tensile strength resists tension or being pulled apart. One of the other properties is flexibility, which is a measure of how easy it is to bend a material. Materials that are flexible can bend without breaking apart. For example, the substance rubber is a flexible material. It will be much easier for us to water the garden with a rubber hose than a steel hose. We use flexible materials in different objects such as car tires, plastic rulers, fabrics for clothing, household furnishings and etc. Now let's discuss about the boiling point and melting point. Water is a substance that we are very familiar with. We see water in our kitchens in solids, liquids and gas states. When ice melts, it changes from a solid to a liquid and it does this at around 0 degrees Celsius. We call this the melting point of ice. When we heat water, eventually it will boil and it changes from a liquid to a gas and it does this at around 100 degrees Celsius. We call this the boiling point of water. Have you noticed something when I said around 0 degrees Celsius and around 100 degrees Celsius? This is because the conditions are not always identical. Pressure and impurities in the water, such as chemicals, can make a difference in the melting points and the boiling points. For example, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius in our beaches, but water boils at 96.5 degrees Celsius on the top of Table Mountain. Do you know why? Because of the difference in elevation. Beaches lies in 0 feet elevation and on the top of Table Mountain it lies in 3,300 feet elevation. In that case, in South Africa, where would be the lowest boiling point of water? Hmm. 
yes of course in mount insliana mountain peak elevation of 11424 feet in drakensberg and in there we will get a boiling point of water at 88.1 degrees celsius the next one is electrical conductivity did you know some materials like copper allow electricity to move through them while others do not materials that allow electricity to move through them are called electrical conductors materials that do not allow electricity to move through them are called electrical insulators we use the property of electrical conductivity of materials like copper and aluminium to make electrical wiring however electricity can be very dangerous so we have to protect ourselves from it to do this we use good electrical insulators like ceramics and plastic both the ceramic and plastic are good electrical insulators because they do not allow the electricity to flow through them now we can look to heat conductivity which is the ability of a material to conduct heat or let the heat pass through them we call this thermal conductivity for example cooking pots can be made from different materials metals are good thermal conductors the heat can pass through the pot to the food the pot itself could be made of copper or aluminium the handles of the pots should not conduct heat because when you remove the pot from the heat source it can burn your hand so plastic or wood are used to make handles because they are good thermal insulators these are not the only factors that we can use to select suitable materials there are many other factors that we can choose to select suitable materials it can also affect why we choose a particular material we also choose materials um because of their appearance style color texture and cost We cannot always combine all the factors that we want. So we have to choose which factor is more important. For example, if we need a metal item that needs to be both strong and light, titanium is perfect for this. But using titanium can be very expensive. So we use aluminum instead. Almost everything that we do has an impact on the environment. the materials in the object that we use every day come from mining or manufacturing these activities can damage a beautiful diverse planet manufacturing processes use a lot of energy and often causes pollution for example mining uses a lot of energy and causes environmental damage so please before throwing away things try to recycle fuels are usually obtained from oil extracting oil from the ground causes huge pollution problems when we burn these fuels we release gases that are very harmful to the environment once we have finished with these things we usually dispose of them the disposal of things can cause pollution and takes up space in the landfill sites many of the landfill sites are full of plastic that cannot be recycled thank you for watching this video if you find this video informative then please like share and subscribe to my youtube channel till then stay tuned to my channel bye bye